recently new to eDiscovery client has asked the question, does data get larger after processing? Now, I know you think you know the answer to the question and you most of the time right. But today, let's talk about situations when data can get larger after processing and the one situation where that may not happen. So I know it's a basic topic, but I think it'd be good to cover it. Well, some time ago, we had a very cost conscious client who was asking about hosting charges, how much they're gonna get billed, and they wanted to know exact figures even before processing starts. And we had to explain like, look, uh, data does change in size with processing and usually it gets large. And they were asking why, what can they do so it doesn't happen. Um, and uh, we had to explain to them all the details of what's happening during the processing. So I feel like today, let's talk about why data gets larger with processing. But then there was one situation I had when data actually got smaller after processing finished. So we'll get to that last. One of the most common sources of data that increases after processing is zip files. We all use zip, we have zip files on our folders, we have them everywhere, and those files during processing get unzipped or extracted, and the file size increases because that was the original point of putting files into a zip so they're smaller. So part of the processing, we have to uncompress all the files, open them up, and uh, perform other tasks. But the first step is to unzip things. And that's usually most common reason where uh, data becomes larger during processing. Also, you have PST files. They're also container files. Now those may or may not be compressed. They often have some compression applied to them. So just like a zip files, they will be extracted and they will take up more space once ingested into processing software. After that, we're gonna have extracted text. When we process, we take all the text of the document and we'll pull it out of the native file and we store it somewhere else for indexing. It could either go in a database or as a text file on a hard drive, but that text is actually a significant portion of some of the native files we have. So again, by extracting text and saving it separately, we again increase size of our storage that we need to hold all the data. Then we have metadata. Same idea as extracted text. We take in different pieces of a document, extracting them out and saving them somewhere else. So now we're still storing the original data and we're storing all metadata separately. That metadata does go into like a database and whenever the billing department accumulates all the numbers, they usually get it from different areas. And some people do pay for the database, some do not. Usually uh, people do pay for database storage. It is different than file storage, and actually it's way more expensive than uh, file storage, but it gets all combined together, and that adds up to the size you're getting billed for. Now, the last source of where data gets expanded is the most controversial one, and that is attachments. When you have your emails, they're usually stored in like MSG file format. And in MSG, you have a message and attachment stored within a single file. And then when we process, we take the attachment, pull it out and we store it separately. So now we almost double in size of the storage requirement when we store attachment twice. So that's kind of an inefficient way of storing data, but that's what most of the e-discovery software does. So you are paying basically twice for storing all the attachments. Now one of the ways you can save money here is if you ask your vendor to process emails in MHT or MHTML file format. Basically, we take an MSG file, we're throwing away the attachment, only keeping the message itself, converting into like an HTML file format and saving that. That reduces size of the file dramatically, but that also uh, may have some downsides down the road, like you wouldn't be able to examine it as thoroughly in the future uh, and see what kind of metadata is present, uh, maybe message header information or something like that. Uh, so you will be, you will have less options of what you can do with that specific native file. Because of that, I generally prefer MSG. So those are all the reasons why data gets larger after processing. But is it possible for data to get smaller? And I say yes, because I had that particular situation. So we received a bunch of PST files. They were fairly sizable and we started processing them. But the record count we were getting, number of messages processed, was extremely low for those files. 
And so the first thing I thought like, well, maybe they have like these ginormous attachments that you see uh, from a graphics design company, you know, like five, 10 megabyte PDF files and PowerPoints. When we looked at it, it, it was not the case. The message count within the PSTs were incredibly low. So what happened in that situation? I suspect is client went into those PSTs first and they deleted whatever they didn't turn over to us. They basically went through, they just hit delete, 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 and they erased a bunch of messages. However, PST is a database, kind of like old concordance database, where when you delete a record, it just gets marked for deletion and doesn't actually get deleted. And in order to physically remove that uh, empty space from inside the PST file, you have to compact it. So the client never did that, and they gave us PST files with basically either empty or unallocated space inside those PSTs. And so we had a multi gigabyte import turn into only a few gigs after processing. So hopefully this helps you understand how file size can change with processing. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Don't forget to follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you on another video.